This is cracked. What's up, Maz here. I hope you're having a splendid day. So today we will uh, start using a new toy, which is the QuickJack SLX 7000. But as you saw from the intro, some parts were broke. So I had to ship out the pump because the box with the pump was damaged and it had damaged the pump done. I don't know what had happened. And I got a new pump back. So, but during that period i lost a little bit of energy of using the quick jacks but finally we are here then yet again something has been lying around without me using it but today is or actually i've tested it before this video so uh, we will have a look bar uh, together then how it works with my nd2 miata and the intention of today's video is to show you how the quick jack slx 7000 works with the nd2 this car is also lowered it's a small vehicle so hopefully it will give you some input on other type of vehicles you have which are similar to this or not that big of cars or if you have a lowered car so that is the main purpose of today's video i will not show the assembly of the pump and the hoses and bleeding etc because there are other videos for that and also so I got my pre-assembled, <laughs> I don't know, it, maybe it just would have taken an hour or two to get it all set up, but I didn't have that time, unfortunately. And also the cost of the fluid is almost one third of what I had to pay to get the things pre-assembled and bled, etc. I think it was around 100 euros or so to get it pre-assembled. But that ta did tank a little bit because the pump was broke, so I had to send it back and get a new one and fill it up and so on. But but the frames etc were bled and so on so that is something you can consider if you do not have the knowledge or don't have the time etc to have the system pre-assembled before it's shipped out to you then you know at least also that every fitting everything is working there are no leakages etc so that is just a tip if you want to cash out the money for getting it pre-assembled but as you can see we don't see any frames uh, they are tucked in under the car we don't see a pump that is in the way so uh, that is also a topic that we will talk about today as you can see my garage is not that big so uh, one main thing is to have something that works uh, from a space perspective in the garage so it's not lying around being in the way and so on and so on so uh, that is what we will be talking about today and also i thought i'll show you uh, approximately how much time it takes to have the car in its state it is, no frames visible, get the frames out, get it lined up, get them lined up and get the car up in the air. And we'll talk a little bit about how much time that takes. But before we get there, if you do like today's video, give it a thumbs up, that will help me a lot. Do remember to subscribe if you like the content of the channel and also do leave your comments, uh, questions, etc., in the comments section below. That will be very interesting to hear your input. But with that said, let's get on with the video. So let's start off with storing the frames. As you can see, I have them under the car and they fit nicely under the car. Even though my car is lowered, it is not super low, but still it works. And you cannot drive over these literally, but you can have them in the center of your car in between the wheels then. And in that aspect, you can drive over them. Let me show you what it looks like from the behind as well. I hope this focuses. So there you have the frames. I hope this comes through. So there are no issues as such with storing these under the car as such and uh, maybe if you have a super low car it will be some issues but uh, with the nd then in the state it is i have coilovers and i think the car is sitting something around 13 inches from the fender to the center of the wheel so it is not super low but low enough in my opinion so that works really well and also as you can see i have the hoses right here nicely tucked away and there we have the pump it is not a big unit and i went with the version that connects to a 12 230 volt socket there is one option which you can use to operate it through 12 volts so you could 
use it with the battery of the car. So if you take the quick checks with you, you can then uh, operate it on the go, so to speak. By my opinion, uh, I didn't need to do that. So hence why I went with a 230 volt option. And as you can see, it is a, how should I say, clean uh, installation because we don't see anything and the garage is not that big. I was considering of getting uh, scissor lifts, but I think it would drive me crazy to drive over them every time I would get into the garage or drive over them every time I was backing out of the garage. When we were building the garage, I was thinking of actually having flush mounted scissor lifts, but it would get very expensive and with the type of jobs that I do with a car in this garage, I don't think uh, the cost of it would be worth it then in my case. So I will be doing some car detailing. I will be changing pads or uh, flushing the uh, brake fluid, changing oil, etc. But if I would have had many cars coming in and out, etc., maybe then that would have been a good option to go with. So in essence, if you have a small garage, one option is then to have the jacks under your car or you can actually then mount them on a wall if you have uh, created brackets. Uh, I know QuickJack sells brackets as well to store them uh, sitting against a wall. So that is that with regards to the storing. So now let's have a look what it is to operate these and also what is included in the standard kit, so to speak. So apart from the frames themselves, which we will have a look at in just a bit, we get two of these longer hoses. So one end attaches to the frames. The frames do have a shorter hose. And as you can see, it has these neat uh, quick fittings. Uh, hopefully this focuses. So I'll show you how these work. So one end goes to the frame and the other end goes to the pump. And the pump looks like this. We do have the remote for the operation of the uh, frames then up and down. And also we have a handle so we can lift the pump itself. And this is the valve where you do fill up the oil. And we have the two fittings then for the hoses. As I mentioned, then uh, this is the 230 volt option. There is a 12 volt operated pump as well. We do also get two of these handles. So these are supposed to go on the frame so you can pull it and push it in. But I have found it to be easier just to pull on the frame itself without using these because they slip quite easily off the frame. But maybe that's just me. And also we do get eight of these lifting blocks. As you can see, we do get four taller ones and four shorter ones. And I found out that the taller ones, at least on my car and with the way our garage is, I cannot fit these under the pinch weld. So I have to use these, but we have a, another issue with that. I'll show you in a bit, but I think I have a way of working around it, which we can discuss a little bit. The, that is to actually lift the car first a little bit with these and then lower it and then we can access to have these put in place because the car will be sitting a little bit higher once it has been lifted. But uh, that is something to consider as well. But for now let's pull the frames out and get them um, positioned correctly and have the car lifted up. So let me get one side out. So I just simply pull on the frame itself. As you can see, it slides out quite easily. It, what I have to say then, uh, our tiles is of course a little bit more slippery than if you have a more uh, rough surface. So if you have bare concrete, etc., it might be a little bit more difficult to actually pull these out under the car or position them under the car. So that is something to consider. And also as we have tiles, uh, the frame do get stuck in the borders between the different tiles because everything is not uh, fully flat, so to speak. But this is how the frames look. And here we would position the lifting block. So we have one place here and then we have two places on the front end. And I need to mention, uh, there is no specific, as far as I have seen, which is the correct way of lifting it. So the way I have it now, it will lift the car in forward uh, motion, so to speak. But if I do turn the frames around and have this one on the other side and the other one on this side, it will then be lifting the car backwards, so to speak. But I have not found which way is the correct way of doing it. What is important is to have these locking bars uh, facing outwards from the car. 
so what is important to do when you have the frames uh, out or want to position them is that they need to be parallel with each other so distance between the front and the back of them or the front and back of them needs to be the same distance so you don't lift things uh, unevenly because that could be very dangerous and also the frames need to be in the same position forward and backwards because if uh, one frame is sitting a little bit in front of the other then also you could potentially lift it in a weird way which would potentially cause the car to falling off and we don't want that and I'll show you what I have done with regards to getting uh, the frames quite easily in, uh, in, in, in this direction then and in the direction of how far apart from the car it needs to be I think I have found a measure that works as well and we will talk a little bit about that and also what is important to think of when you before you start using uh, uh, the jack stand or the quick jack is this uh, pressurized uh, cylinder which is used when you're lowering the car make sure that uh, pressure are the same on both sides otherwise one side will go uh, quicker than the other one and that could also unsettle the car and potentially if you're unlucky then make the car uh, fall off one of the frames so that is important to check that uh, the pressure on these uh, cylinders are the same and you have a Schrader valve and you can just use a regular uh, uh, measurement tool for pressure then. So next step is to get the frames lined up and hook them up to the pump and uh, lift the car up. Also I need to mention then uh, to if for some reason uh, let's say this side do uh, have lower pressure than the other side and we want to get them even you could use a hand pump like this or a bicycle pump whatever which fits on a Schrader valve uh, compressed air and so on to have it uh, pressurized to reach the same uh, pressure you have on the other side but there is a maximum uh, pressure uh, which these can take and I will put a text down below how much that is and also of course it is very important if you do get things like this is to read the manual from one end to the other so you don't miss anything out so just don't take my word for how to operate this and how to set it up because I'm uh, skipping a bunch of steps now as I mentioned earlier the lift uh, or the frames will lift the car in a forward motion so what is important is to position the frames so that the back end in this case doesn't get in touch with the tire so if you have the whole assembly too far to the back this portion will touch the tires and it won't and it will interfere with the lifting so what I have done is I have actually put some tape on the frame itself as you can see these yellow uh, pieces of uh, tape and I have done a straight line here I don't know if this comes through so I have a straight line here and that I try to position with the inner fender of uh, the front of the car with that line and I know every time then if I do that it, the rear end will not hit the rear tire and we are good to go and then of course we need to measure how far uh, from the car the frame needs to be in this position then. but that is the second thing we need to do we of course don't have to be millimeter precise but it is good measure to do it as good as we can because uh, it is a safety thing we don't want the car to fall off and god forbid if we're under the car working on it and uh, something would happen because we have been sloppy in for two three minutes while setting things up so what i will do now is to simply push the frames in under the car approximately where i think it needs to be and then we will do some more fine measurements with regards to positioning the frames so what I'll just do is to simply line it up as good as I can and then we can use a, a straight whatever you have and just to make a quick uh, check to see if it's positioned correctly or not and in my case it looks very good so I don't know how I can show you this, but if I push this against the fender, we see it lines up pretty well with the line. 
and then I have done the same thing on the other side so this is just a quick reference of how to position the frames in this direction and now we need to make take some measurements to have it in the correct position in this direction then. So what I do to position the frames parallel to each other on both sides then of course is to measure a point from the car as a reference to the frame and I'll do that front and back and I do the same on the other side is to use some uh, angle bracket like this and I put it on flush against the floor and I take a measurement here and I need and I know that this needs to be 17 millimeters so this needs to uh, go in a little bit more and this is to have the pads lined up with the uh, pinch welds then. So let's see. A little bit more. Now we're at 70 millimeters there and on the rear I'll show you what measurement I will take. On the rear I will measure from uh, this point right here to the angle bracket and I will measure 60 millimeters to that point. So this is 80 now. So if I push this in a little bit. Now we are at 60 millimeters. So we will do the same on the other side and we know that the frames are parallel at least when measured from the car. So that was that, we're getting one side ready and as you saw it goes pretty quickly. I did do one thing on purpose here, I didn't miss it, and that is, as you can see, the distance we have from the frame to the car, it's not that much. And even with the smaller blocks, there is no way of getting these in once we have pushed the frame into place. So that is something you need to consider before you push it into place and start measuring and everything then you realize, yeah, uh, but I mean, you do it once and then you don't do it again. So what we simply need to do now is just to pull the frame out, position the block and push the frame back in and take our measurements or whatever you might have to get these in the proper position. Then. And for the ND, ND2, and if you have the frames position as I have, lifting car forwards, the, there are two places where you can put your lifting blocks. One is here in the front then and one a little bit further back and uh, you need to use the one that is a little bit further back. As you remember or may know there are two dimples in the pinch weld where the blocks are supposed to be positioned and it lines up with the second slot for the lifting blocks then on the frame itself. As you can see we have the pads in place and hopefully you can see the two dimples, one there and one there. The pad should be sitting in the center of those so this can be maybe shifted a little bit to the front of the car and what I have done now is I have turned the pads so lengthwise they are going across in this direction so and I have pushed them to the end of the frame so they are sitting tucked against the frame and I know them uh, the position of them will be the same from side to side and I have done similar on the rear as well I don't know if this comes through let's see so there you have the rear pads as well and uh, now we are good to go and what you need to consider is then not to have the hoses uh, tangled up so I have put them under the frame here and the same on the other side and what is left to do is connect them to these longer hoses and then to the pump. So to connect the shorter hose to the longer hose, we simply just press them against each other like so. And as you saw, this locking mechanism then shifted forward. And as you can see, it has a slot. So this needs to be lined up with this uh, uh, ball here in order for us to be able to pull this back and remove the hoses from each other. Before you operate it, twist this a little bit so it moves away from the ball so it cannot get loose. And then the next step is to attach it to the pump. 
the other end then attaches to the pump in similar way. And it doesn't matter which one of them you use uh, to either side then. Once everything has been checked, you can start by pressing the up button then. And just before the pads hit the frame, so you can double check that everything is okay. You do that all around. And uh, once that is done, you can start lifting the frames. And they have two locking positions. One is around here and one is uh, further away. So I'll show you what that looks. And you will see when the frames do lock into place when lifting the car up. It is important to make sure that both sides do lift in the same speed. So one doesn't lift and the other one is not lifting. So you need to keep looking at the other side just to be sure that everything works the same way in both frames. So we are reaching the first locking position. And to lock it now, we just push down. And now it has locked in the lower position. If we continue pressing the up, it will continue to the second locking position. And it's still, again, important to check that both sides do operate at the same speed. And press it down to lock it. Now we don't have any pressure on the hydraulic system. We only have the mechanical locks done. So this is what it looks like. We have a little bit of clearance, not that much. So we could potentially uh, uh, move the frames a little bit forward just to have a little bit more space there. But as you can see, it is ample amount of uh, distance between the ground and the car uh, we'll take a measurement from the tire down and so you can see how much that is but you can easily work under the car if you do wish so uh, to change the oil or trans uh, not the transmission maybe but exhaust system etc but in my case we do have a slope in our garage so from all directions we more or less have a slope down towards the center of the garage as you can see we have a well there for rainwater or uh, melted snow etc so the frames are not sitting 100% flush with the floor which is what you would want to have so in my case if I will be working under the car I will actually also put some jack stands under the frame or under the car somewhere just to be sure that nothing tilts or moves because we don't have an even flooring here. But what is good practice is to try to budge the car, but as you can see, it is quite sturdy. I don't think this will go anywhere, but still. And also what I need to mention about the smaller blocks is this. At least on my car, as you can see, I think it's even touching the black trim piece here which is not a good thing so uh, in my opinion uh, the best would be the larger blocks but it is difficult to get them in under the pinch weld so maybe if I find something that is uh, just a little bit shorter than the tall ones uh, I think we are good to go otherwise uh, we'll have to reconsider and potentially drive the car up on some small boards in order for us to be able to fit the larger blocks so we have somewhere around approximately 27 centimeters or 270 millimeters from the bottom of the tire to the floor which is good enough and i put down how much the actual uh, frames do lift the car and also what is important to mention is that the 5000 slx and the 7000 slx the frame lengths are the same but i believe the 7000 slx is a little bit higher and also there is one 3000 500 SLX which uh, is up to 3,500 pounds and then the 5,000 is 5,000 pounds and the 7,000 is 7,000 pounds. But all in all it is plenty enough space here to work with the wheels, the brakes, uh, detailing if you want to go in under the car etc with regards to this. Maybe swapping out an engine is a little bit difficult or a transmission but maybe it's doable but 
for that maybe you need to have a more appropriate lift so what we'll do now is to lower the car and i'll show you what that looks like and we will wrap the video up to lower the car we need to first release the uh, mechanical locks first for that we need to lift the car slightly and then just pull these arms out so they come out of these latches and we need to do the same on the other side and again it's important as when we were lifting the car is to make sure that when we are lowering it it does it simultaneously on both sides As you can see, it goes pretty quick. There you have it, the car lifted and lowered in very short time without much effort. So there you have it, that was all to it. It takes a little bit of time to get used to how to position the frames uh, in relation to the car and to each other then, but if you do it in relation to the car, they would be uh, the same more or less in relation to each other as well. So my only gripe is on how to solve uh, when using the shorter blocks. Uh, but now, as I mentioned, if I, uh, now that we have lifted the car and the springs have uh, been unloaded a little bit, it is possible to actually use the larger blocks now. So one option could be to lift the car up and put it down and put in the larger ones and they will not contact uh, the black trim piece as I showed you. But all in all, I think it is a really nice setup. It goes quickly. You need to take your time when setting it up so you're safe and also do use some other preventive measures if you're working under the car, specifically if you don't have an even floor as I have, as we have uh, the slope towards the well. But again, then uh, that is something you need to consider depending on where you're working with this. I might actually put some rubber mat or something which takes up the uneven floor, but let's see about that. Most of the time I will not be working under the car. I will be working with the brakes or wheels and detailing and so on. So for me, it's not a fun big issue. So uh, there you have it. So the 5000 SLX and the 7000 SLX works just fine with the ND, ND2 Miata and other smaller cars or lower cars. And if you do have any questions at all or if I'm doing something incorrectly, do leave your comments in the comment sections below. That will be highly appreciated. If you found today's video helpful, give it a big thumbs up. That will help me in the YouTube algorithm. Otherwise, this will disappear in the ether. I don't know. And also, if you do like the content of the channel, do remember to subscribe. With that said, I'll be seeing you on the next one.